Tuskegee is marching to the beat of a new beginning with Tony Haygood as the city's new mayor. Beaming at his inauguration, he was still upbeat a few weeks later when Echo Boom interviewed him about the early stages of being mayor. I'm excited about the opportunity to serve, to work with people who have ideas and execute some things to try to get things done in a better manner, such that the citizens realize uh, better services and opportunities here in Tuskegee. This new beginning is not a blissful honeymoon. He inherited old headaches, but he feels the remedy will come from the continued unified efforts of his office, the city council, city manager, and other stakeholders. But the, the key thing that we have to do is to first stabilize where we are, and we've recognized that by reviewing our situation and seeing what resources we have available, and also recognizing uh, that we have to build some relationships in terms of financial support that would allow us to do some other things. Because right now we don't have strong financial support from our banking institutions, so there's a need to reestablish that so that going forward we have some uh, room or cushion, as you would say, and not to feel so um, restricted in terms of how we operate. He is genuinely optimistic about this city's future and is elated over a new equipment purchase. We get almost a $700,000 ladder truck. That ladder truck will reach anything on this campus. And we don't have much in the city that's the need for. It reaches 75 feet by hydraulic. It's state of the art, $700,000 piece of equipment. We only had to put out about $32,000. Appreciate the city manager and the city council recognizing we need to do that at that time. All of the money is tight. So it's delivered. And it's there. And that's what Santa Claus was in the Christmas parade. <laughs> of the new factory. Progress and challenges are twin realities inside city government, and there are also challenges on the outside. Over a period of time, people, perhaps some of the citizens, have become frustrated and um, have fallen into a pattern of not doing or not thinking or not expecting much more. That's something we can't afford to do. We have to want more in our community. We have to expect more. We have to expect more of ourselves, we have to expect more of the people that we work with. And as we expect and demand and desire a better community, that's what we'll get. We'll get what we ask for and what we seek. If we don't seek a better community, it won't get any better. We can't just sit and talk about it or complain about it or feel like that's, nothing's going to change. It it's, will change when we decide to make it change. And that involves citizens uh, being proactive, it involves citizens expecting and asking the city government to do more for it. And it involves the city government being more open and uh, responsive to citizens' requests and needs. Speaking of citizens, they have been giving him an earful. The main thing I hear from citizens is opportunity. They want the opportunity to be able to develop businesses, to improve the conditions and their living conditions in their areas, such as abandoned houses and streets and to try to get a handle on the utilities situation. Utilities is a very big challenge for most citizens. Uh, real or perceived, there is, uh, seems to be a problem there to most citizens. So I think that's something we have to address. We can't get around and try to see how we can help citizens um, have a more manageable utility situation. Now, in that sense, it may be because many of the houses here, as we know, are older. Uh, very few houses have been built here in the last 10 years or so. Most houses are much older. Most of our apartments are 20, 30 years old, if not older. So they're not necessarily energy efficient. But if there are some things that we can do from the utilities board or from the city to help citizens manage their utility situation, it's to our benefit as well as to that of the citizens. Because we want the citizens to be comfortable, but yet we don't want them to be burdened with a utility bill that they can't manage. That doesn't help the citizens, and it really doesn't help us in the long run. Another priority is alleviating blight. But we're developing a plan to address those abandoned houses. Priority would be naturally those uh, houses that are on the corridors and leading to the city, our main streets, and then go to the secondary streets. And also houses that are next door to people who are living and are uncomfortable with the conditions that the house next door has created. 
So we'll set up a list of priorities about how to address them. And then once they are baited, then the city will have to develop how we'll make them available to other people who may want to obtain the houses and under what kind of conditions they'd have to obtain them and then to people even outside who may, may want to invest in the house. And regarding job growth, there are positive developments. And I think that we'll have an opportunity to get some industries here. We've had, had some. I've talked with uh, at least two potential industries that have expressed an interest in coming into Tuskegee, and particularly into the commerce park. It's just a matter of time when we get the right uh, match. A lot of industries come in looking for incentives, so we have to work with the state of Alabama that actually offers incentives. The city offers some, but our potential and ability to offer incentives to external industries is limited. He says we already have a homegrown industry that can generate more jobs, tourism. We just have to develop uh, a reasonable plan and coordinate the activities of a number of entities in this community so it works together. Right now, a lot of that activity is going on independently, which doesn't give us an opportunity to capture the resources or the jobs around the tourism activity that comes into the community. So we hope to, you know, bring everyone together more in a more unified way to develop a plan that will allow us to capture more of the resources and develop more jobs around tourism and retail. Roses came in and, and bought Maxway, which expanded, and it was good to see. We had the ribbon cutting the other day, and you saw the entire staff there. There were more people working there than I realized. Now, while some of them are part-time jobs, they are opportunities for people to earn additional revenue and income. But that was encouraging because instead of a store leaving, this was a store that was being taken over by a different division and a larger store that actually gives us, more, gives us more opportunities and selection in terms of merchandise that we can buy at the store. So we have some new opportunities in retail, and I think we have some others coming. I wish to offer to Mayor Haygood the heartiest, the heartiest of congratulations. Solidifying another new beginning, this pledge from Dr. Brian Johnson. I assure you on behalf of Tuskegee University that he will have my unwavering support, my unwavering commitment, most importantly, my unwavering friendship. In these days and times, as a people, it is going to be very important that we have not only mere words of support, but activities and works that will support and help. And I assure you, Mayor Hayden, that Tuskegee University will intend to do that. Collaboration between the university and the city can be mutually rewarding. Mayor Haygood says there are opportunities tied to research projects, as well as potential opportunities involving college faculty and students. One of the periods of time that people are most creative is when they're in college or in a university setting, because they don't have job responsibilities or family necessarily or other obligations that they have to worry about. They're in a creative stage. And so we'd like to get that talent more involved in the city because they may offer solutions that we haven't thought about to challenges that we see. You've got people in school of business that, business that can tell us a lot about how we operate uh, and they offer suggestions. Now, they may not always work because there may be some things that they don't understand, but at least by offering the suggestions, it gives us an opportunity to see things from a different light and consider them. You have people in the School of Engineering that can help us solve some of our challenges in our traffic situations here construction science and architecture. The abandoned houses is a perfect example where they could get involved and give us assistance there. So no, there are a number of areas where not only the, the students could get involved and help us out, but the staff and faculty and then the research opportunities from the uh, Department of Agriculture and other areas as well. <laughs> All of this beautiful energy at a new beginning for him contrasts sharply with the negative energy caused by the ending of the presidential election. Mayor Haygood offers consolation. While we did not have some of the successes that we wanted from the national election, perhaps, uh, it gives us an opportunity to focus on ourselves locally. How can we improve things here? I would like citizens to challenge me, and I challenge them on what we can do to improve. 
by communicating with each other, we can improve our community. We can improve the situations for our families, for our community, for our church, for our university. We have a great HBCU here. So I think in 2017, we need to look at how can each one of us do more to make a positive difference in our community, in our university, in the state of situation that we live in. We want a top quality of life, and it starts when we start making that happen. Thank you for watching this exclusive Echo Boom presentation.